while discussing the DC circuit analysis, I have shown you the Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law in case of those circuits. In this video, I will talk about Kirchhoff's law in case of AC circuit. Application of Kirchhoff's law in AC circuit is quite different from the application of Kirchhoff's law in a DC circuit. Here, if we have an AC circuit, we, we will apply one or more sinusoidal voltages as our voltage source and that sine wave will have angular frequency of w in that case the other voltages and currents in that circuit let's say i will denote that with i and p they will also be sinusoidal having angular frequency of omega Therefore, if I use a sinusoidal voltage source as a source in the AC circuit, we will get sinusoidal voltages and sinusoidal currents. And I have shown you that if we have any sinusoidal voltages and sinusoidal currents, we can easily convert them into phasor form. Therefore, we cannot simply take the algebraic sum of voltages if I talk about Kirchhoff's voltage law. Or we cannot take the algebraic sum of currents if I talk about Kirchhoff's current law in case of AC circuit therefore we will not take the algebraic sum of voltages rather we will take the sum of the phasor voltages if I talk about Kirchhoff's voltage law or I will take the sum of the phasor currents if I talk about Kirchhoff's current law okay now let me show you Kirchhoff's voltage law in case of AC circuit see here we can state the Kirchhoff's voltage law using these two statements first one is that Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum of phasor voltages around any closed loop in a circuit or a network is zero this indicates that if I have several voltage components in a circuit the sum of that phasor voltages let's say I will do, rotate in clockwise direction will be equal to zero Second one is that the sum of the phasor voltage rises. The sum of the phasor voltage rises equals the sum of the phasor voltage drops around a, any closed path within a circuit or network. See, the sum of phasor voltage rises will be equal to the sum of the phasor voltage drops around any closed path within a circuit or network. This indicates that if I talk about a closed loop, you will see sum of the phasor voltages drops will be equal to the sum of phasor voltage rises in that circuit now how do we indicate the voltage rise and voltage drops in a circuit see if I talk about the polarity of the component you will see if I encounter the negative terminal first and positive terminal later of any of any voltage absorbing or voltage supplying element in that case that will rise the voltage in the circuit that means our that means we will take that voltage quantity as positive one okay and if I encounter positive one first negative one later that will be the voltage absorbing element therefore we will take the sign of the voltage as negative and that will indicate the voltage is being absorbed from the circuit now let's say i have this z1 z2 and z3 these three impedances are connected in series let's say i am supplying this circuit with this alternating voltage vs see this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal this indicates that during first positive half cycle this terminal will be at higher potential and this terminal will be at lower potential in that case you will see the total current rms value of total current in the circuit will be capital i okay now see as this is a series circuit the current i will be same everywhere in the circuit this applied voltage whose negative terminal is in this side and positive terminal is in this side let's say the voltage being absorbed by this impedance z1 is v1 the voltage absorbed by this z2 is v2 and the voltage across this z3 is v3 here you will see as current will be entering from this direction in this z1 this side will be positive and current will be leaving z1 in this direction that will be negative 
z2 will be entering from this direction so this will be positive z2 will be leaving from this direction so that will be negative see v i will be entering in this z3 in this direction so this will be positive i will be leaving this z3 in this direction so this will be negative okay now see if i apply k v l in this circuit i will rotate in clockwise direction okay in clockwise direction now see if i encounter positive terminal first and negative terminal later the sign of the voltage will be negative because that will indicate the voltage absorption and if i encounter negative terminal first positive terminal later that, that will indicate the voltage rise in the circuit therefore sign of the voltage will be positive so using kvl i can write algebraic sum of the phasor voltages in the circuit in clockwise direction will be equal to zero now see if i revolve in this loop from this terminal to this terminal i will encounter this vs its negative terminal first positive terminal later so its sign will be positive plus vs after that i will encounter this v1 its positive terminal first negative terminal later so its value will be minus v1 after that i will encounter this z2 its positive terminal first negative terminal later so its voltage will be minus v2 after that i will encounter this z3 its positive terminal first and negative terminal later it will be minus v3 this vs is supplying the voltage in the circuit and v1 v2 and v3 are the voltage absorption therefore their sign will be negative see if i take v1 v2 and v3 in the right side i will get vs equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 therefore you will see this vs will indicate voltage rises and v1 plus v2 plus v3 will indicate voltage drops so i can say that sum of voltage drops phasor voltage drops in this circuit will be equal to the sum of voltage rises in this circuit let me talk about kishop's current law kishop's current law it states that the sum of phasor currents at any node is zero see here i have this parallel circuit the impedances z1 z2 and z3 they are connected in parallel because one end of the z1 z2 and z3 are connected at this point and another end of z1 z2 and z3 are connected at this point so they are connected in parallel and in this circuit we are applying an alternating voltage p let's say the phasor value of this voltage is v vector as a result we will get source current i our i vector now see in this circuit we will have total two nodes this one will be a node and this one will indicate another node so these are the two nodes here let's say i will denote this node with node a and this node with node b now see in this node the total current is entering and in this node you will see the current i1 will be flowing through the impedance z1 the current i2 will also be flowing through the impedance z2 and the current i3 will also be flowing or the current i3 will also be outgoing from this node and that current will be flowing through the impedance z3 and the total current i will return to the source from this direction okay now see the total current i kcl or kishop's current law states that the sum of phasor currents at any node is zero if i write down the equation the first statement in equational form i can write it like this summation of phasor currents in a node is equal to zero now see here in this circuit 
we have total four currents i i1 i2 and i3 when we will take the sum of currents in a node incoming currents will be denoted with plus sign and the outgoing currents from the node will be denoted with minus sign the currents will be outgoing from the node will be negative see here this current i is entering so here i can write it like this i i1 is outgoing minus i1 the current i2 is outgoing so minus i2 i3 also outgoing so it will be minus i3 that will be equal to zero now see if i take i in the left side and i1 i2 in and i3 in the right side i will get i equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 see this i indicates the incoming current at this node so i can write it like this summation of incoming current i entering or incoming at node a and see i1 i2 and i3 are outgoing from this node so i can write it like this summation of outgoing phase or currents in the right side so here you will see summation of incoming phase or currents will be equal to summation of outgoing phase or currents and this equation represents the second statement of kcl which indicates that sum of the phase or currents incoming to a node is equal to the phase or current sorry p h a s o r phase or currents out outgoing to that node okay so this equation will represent the second statement and this equation will represent the first statement when i will apply kcl in any circuit in phasor form i will use this formula summation of incoming phasor currents will be equal to summation of outgoing phasor currents okay that's it thank you